the day you've been waiting for. Today, we're going to talk to you about stop being a heartaholic. Okay? What is a heartaholic? Somebody who's addicted to difficulty. Like, I am blown away. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a coach, right? So I coach people in business. I'm blown away by how many people do things, like they find the hardest possible way to do a thing, and then they do it that way. I guess maybe it makes them feel smarter. I'm going to tell you right now, stop it. Stop being a heartaholic. In fact, my objective in this live video is to help you go from being a heartaholic, doing all the hard stuff the hard way for the hardest possible time period possible, to stop being a heartaholic and become an easyologist. Now, I don't mean be lazy. When I say stop being a heartaholic, I'm just saying, like, stop doing stuff the hard way because it makes you feel like you're more noble. Um, it makes you feel smarter. It makes you feel more diligent. Be diligent. Work hard at the stuff you're working at, on. But don't do the thing you're doing the hardest possible way just because it's the hardest possible way. There's no merit in that. Um, it's really interesting. Some of you have already heard the story. And we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going I'm to give away some stuff today. So, but you have to be subscribed. You have to have su subscribed as of yesterday at some point. And we're going to do a giveaway. And I'm going to have my team tell me how we're going to do it because I forgot to ask him before he got started. Uh, I, you know what? I love, I, you know, I, one of the things I think that all of us would do better if we just become way less embarrassable and just go ahead and keep it real, right? So I'm just telling you right now, I, we're, give, we're doing giveaways today. I didn't even find out exactly how we're going to do the giveaway part, but I can ask them while we're doing it, and now you know I'm a regular human being. You probably already knew that anyway. Um, so, so it's really interesting to me that um, I was stuck like Chuck in a pickup truck for a, whole, for a very long time, minus the pickup truck. Um, uh, it, it, it felt like nothing I worked on worked. How many of you on YouTube, sometimes you just feel like, I'm working on stuff, but the stuff I'm working on ain't working, right? And I felt like that for a very long time. I got started in tradition, I got started as an entrepreneur really when I was probably about 19 years old. I came home from college uh, my first year. I bought a car, I think it was like a 1971 Buick Skylark. It didn't even have hubcaps on it. I bought it for $50. I drove that car all summer long. And then I got ready to go back to college, and a friend of mine said, hey, man, you want to sell that car? Sure. How much you want? $300. He gave me $300 for it. So I drove it around all summer, bought it for $50, drove it around all summer, sold it for $300, didn't put any money in it at all, just kind of drove it. I was like, huh, you can do that. You can buy cars and fix them up and sell them, minus the fix them up. And, and then I, because I was really good at working on cars, I mean, that may be hard for you all to believe, I knew how to do body work like changing engines and changing transmissions and like putting like wheels on car, like putting mag rims on. Some of y'all remember that term like back in the day, right? Like put the chrome mag wheels on, right? And then the big tires and then sell the car for more money than I bought it for. So I did that for a very long time. And sometimes when I was broke, I would go, I'd knock on somebody's door. Let me say this. Some of you, like um, you think you're broke because there's no opportunity, but you're really broke because you're not taking advantage of the opportunities that currently exist right in, exist right in front of you. And there are a lot of them, right? Um, and I'm not, I'm not coming at you. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying there are opportunities there. I remember when I was broke, right? Broke as a joke, ready to choke. And I'd be driving down the street and I'd see a car sitting in somebody's driveway and the tags were expired and it had grass growing up under or it might be sitting in somebody's yard and might have grass growing under. Or you could tell it's just been sitting there for a long time. It's dirty as all get out, right? I'm like, I'm like hmm. I wonder what's wrong with that car. So I'd go knock on the door. Hey, what's wrong with this car? Do you want to sell it? Well, I would sell it, but the transmission's bad. Really? Well, how much would you sell it for with a bad transmission? Well, I don't know. I'd sell it for um, $300. Tell you what, I'll give you $350 for it. Why would you do that? Well, because I want you to keep the title. I'm going to give you my name. I'm going to give you my phone number. I'm going to give you my address. I'm going to take the car home. I'm going to put a transmission. I'm going to fix it up, and then I'm going to sell it. And then when I sell it, I'm going to come back. I'm going to give you your $350, and then you're going to give me the title, and then I'm going to get, the, get to keep the difference. Okay, cool. I did that dozens of times in my 20s, maybe hundreds. I mean, bought and sold cars. I, like, that, why? Why did I buy and sell cars? Because cars was what I knew. Like, I grew up working on cars with my dad in the driveway, or grew up working, with cars, working on cars with my dad in the yard. 
So I knew how to work. Like, first time I ever took an engine out of a car, I was probably in elementary high school or junior, junior high school working with my dad, take an engine out of a car, and we'd take a come along, and we'd put it in a tree and drive the car up under the tree, unhook all the bolts, attach the chain, and then jack it up. By the way, that's where the term shade tree mechanic comes from. I was a shade tree mechanic. I used, to t I used to use trees to take engines out of cars, okay? Now, so fast forward from that, get married, I'm 25 years old, I'm still buying and selling cars, but I also got started selling insurance, invent selling insurance and investments, right? The only problem was I was terrible at sales. I wasn't just bad. Oh, no, I was woefully awful. How bad were you? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was so bad, I got started with this company called A.L. Williams back in October of 1985. I memorized my presentation. I got my license in January of 86. I started doing presentations. I talked to friends. I talked to family. I talked to strangers. I talked to anybody who would listen to me. I did not make my first sale until April of 1997. And I was doing a lot of presentations. I started October of 90, I, I'm not 97, October of 87. I got started October of 85, licensed in January of 86, made my first sale in, in April of 87, not April of 97, a year and a half. It was a year and a half. I was terrible. I was terrible. But by the way, what's the lesson in that? You don't have to be good at something in order to get good at something. I wasn't good when I got started. But you know what I was? I was willing to be bad and keep doing the activity long enough to get good. And most people, when they're bad, they say, I'm bad, and then they go do something else. And I'd have people ask me during that year and a half when I wasn't making any money, are you still doing that thing? And I would say to them, and I, yes, I said this, do you still have that job you hate? You come at me, I come at you, bruh. That's how we do it. Okay, y'all saw the other side of me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pump the brakes on that part. But I was terrible at sales. But you know what I did? I bought books on, I didn't even buy books on sales. I went to the library and checked out books on sales. Why? I didn't have enough money to buy the books. I know, that, I know that's hard for y'all to believe. I did not have enough money to buy Tom Hopkins How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. But, and there was no Google, there was no Amazon, there was no buy it on eBay for $5. I went to the library, I checked out the book, and then I read it. And, I, the, I, and this was back in 1985, y'all. I read this book in 1985. Here's what I remember. The two things that I remember the most are number one, if you're, um, well, number one, I'm going to give you three things. Number one, here's, here's number one. There's pain in change until the benefits of that change appear. That's one of the principles I learned from Tom Hopkins. There's pain in change until the benefits of that change appear. Okay? So that was the first principle. So, okay, so, so I learned early, thank God I learned early, that if I'm going to become good at sales and I'm not good at sales, there's going to be some pain involved. There's going to be pain in that transformation process. Okay, I'm willing to go through the pain. The benefits will eventually appear. Well, they are clearly here now. They are apparently here because I eventually got good at sales. Okay, second thing I learned from Tom Hopkins was if you're going to get good at sales, you must learn to love no because yeses exist on the other side of noes. Not on the other side of your noes, on the other side of noes. So you've got to go through the yes, no's to get to the yeses. So if you don't learn to love no, you will never get to enough yeses to make yourself successful. So I fell in love with no's. In fact, I, I created this game early in my sales career where my objective was to do enough prospecting, because I used to do prospecting back in the day, back when it made sense. Um, so I, what I would do is I would make sure I talked to enough people to get 10 no's in a row. So I'd say, hey, and whatever the president, the, uh, hey, would you like to look at my opportunity? No. I want to get 10 people to say no in a row. That wasn't the presentation, but I'm just making it simple. Hey, would you like to look at my opportunity? No. Hey, would you like to look at my opportunity? No. Okay, I only got seven more to go and I'm done for the day. Would you like to look at my opportunity? No. Would you like to look at my opportunity? No. Would you like to look at my opportunity? Sure. <gasps> uh, so then I show them my opportunity and now I got to start over from scratch. So what I did was I turned rejection into a game, and so no became something I looked for until I advanced. So at the beginning of my sales career, I loved, like I literally was, my objective was to get as many no's in a row as I could. But if I got a yes, if I didn't get 10 no's in a row, 
and I got a yes in the middle of those 10 no's, what would happen is I would get disqualified. I'd have to start over. So I have to go start over, get 10 more no's in a row. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I mean, no, 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 no. Yes. Ugh. Got to start over again. And so what it did was it got me used to people telling me no. And then I got to the place where I learned how to generate leads. And then I learned how to never get another no. Well, y'all want me to teach you how to get, never get another no? So, so you're doing a presentation. You're closing, right? And this is how you never get another no. You're like, you're closing one-on-one. -on -one. Here's how you don't get no. First of all, you have to like, you have to, you have to become more in tune with your senses because you can smell a no coming before it gets here, right? You, you smell it. It's like, this person's, they're going to be a no. You feel it. And so then you start feeling awkward. So what I did, as soon as I got the first whiff of a no, that smells like a no. <laughs> okay, that's an N. Okay, as soon as I got a first, as soon as, <laughs> I'm keeping it real. As soon as, as, soon as like, they, they start giving me like this little inkling, they, gonna, they about to tell me no. I said, I'm going to tell them no now. I'm telling them no. You know what? I, and I would, I would close up my presentation. I said, you know what? It doesn't look like you're the kind of person I'm looking for, at least not now. But I really appreciate you taking the time to look, so have a great day. Yes, oh, yes, indeed. I, I'd say no so fast. I'd let you off my hook so fast you'd think you was a fish. I'm, not, I'm talking about I'm done. I, I, I remember one time I went to see this rich guy. He was rich. I was broke. I was broke as a joke, but he was rich. And he was an influential guy in Harrisburg. He's like, and I sat down. He's like, okay, I get, you got five minutes. Five minutes? I said, oh, I thought you wanted to see this. I don't, I, there's no universe in which I can do this in five minutes. Okay. Uh, tell you what, it's been good talking to you. Okay, okay, right, how much time you need? 45 minutes. Okay, you got 45 minutes. Oh, okay. I start talking to him. He tries to take my presentation book out of my hand. And, and you see this look I got on my face? This is exact look. What you doing? I'm just looking at mm, That's my book. I'm showing you this. Not, you ain't reading that. That's my book. You know what? Clearly this is not for you, at least not now. But it's been nice talking to you. Have a nice day. I do that so fast. And what happens is you, be, you divorce yourself from the need from somebody else to tell you yes. I don't need anybody to tell me yes. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm making a presentation to give you an opportunity to buy. And if it's for you, you'll know it. And if it's not, you'll, if it's not I'll know it. <laughs> if it's not, you'll know it. Right? And so, so, so I learned to love no. But the, uh, the third thing was STP20. Can I write on the board yet? Or are you, is there, it's stuck. The canvas? Okay. Um, so, so he, I learned this thing called STP20. Okay. So. Are we on there? Okay, hey YouTube, my apologies. I want to apologize first of all to YouTube and Google and everybody out there for blowing up YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we had some kind of power surge or power outage here um, at our office and it, it, it just knocked everything out. It knocked out our internet, it knocked out our power and so we had to wait till we got back on. So we are still here, we're back. Part two, um, stop being a hardaholic, part two. Okay, so that's what we're going to call this, because the other one is already done. Um, and so I was talking about um, STP-20. And so, so we talked about, first of all, uh, the first thing I learned from that book that I got from the library back in 1985 was um, there's pain and change until the benefits of that change appear. The second thing I learned was learn to love no, right? Um, then I talked about how I started telling other people no, so they didn't have the chance to tell me no. And now I'm going to show you STP-20. So this was, this was the illustration in the book. It said, it said S, S, T, P, and then it had a 20 down here, and then this and this. And it looked like this and that, STP-20. Now you say, what is STP-20? What is that? And STP stands for C20 people. C, 20 people, 20 people, oh, actually the 20 should be up here. I'm going to get rid of this. So this is, this is what I got from Tom Hopkins, by the way, y'all. STP 20, STP 20, and then daily. 
okay? And what this is, this is belly to belly. See 20 people belly to belly every day. So you say, how's that belly to belly? This is a belly button. Two big, be- two big bellies, okay, right? So, so see 20 people belly to belly every day. That, Tom Hopkins said, that is the key to success. If you are in sales and you will see 20 people belly to belly every day, it's virtually impossible for you to fail at sales if you keep doing it. Why? Because you're either, you're, even if you're bad, because you're going to be bad, and you're going to stay bad and keep doing the activity until you get good. That's what I did. I was bad. How bad was I? I was so bad. I got started in October of 1985, didn't make my first sale until April of 1987. Within months of making that first sale, though, um, I became the top salesperson in our office. Why? Because in that year and a half, when I was really, really bad, I ran out of all the ways that would not work to make a sale. The only thing I had left were ways that would. And I, don't, I, do, I suffer from a lot of things, but entrepreneurial ADD ain't one of them. And so when I find something that works, I don't go do something else immediately. When I find something that works, I don't get bored with it, I get paid with it. And I put it on rinse and repeat, 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 rinse and repeat. And that's what I would recommend you do. When you find something that works, put it on rinse and repeat and don't get bored with it, get paid with it. And so um, what you'll find is, so, so I, I was telling you my, giving you my origin story. So I was really bad at, I was really bad at sales, became the top salesperson in our office. Then. I joined a couple of different multi-level marketing, network marketing companies, and did okay. I didn't do, I wasn't one of these people um, who was making 20, 30, 40, 50,000 a month. I was making two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 a month, which is better than not good, right? That's better than no money at all, right? And I was doing it part-time. So when I did that, I did it until I got tired of it, and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And what I realized, and this is for me, I, I, I love network marketing. I do. A lot of people don't like it. I love it. It was great for me. It was a great training ground for me. I would not be here today were it not for network marketing. There's no doubt in my mind about that. It was a great personal development space for me. It was great for me to learn business. It was great for me to learn sales. It was great for me to learn leadership, like building teams and leading teams. It was great for me to learn training and communication and all of the skills that I use right now in my business. I, I mean, many of them I learned in multi-level marketing. Um, um, I don't do multi-level marketing anymore. I don't do it at all. Why? Because when I did multi-level marketing, it was always, I didn't want to own a company. And I just felt like every time I worked with a company that somebody else owned, they would do something after I started making a lot of money to mess it up, to make me make less money. I'm like, I'm helping you build your thing, but you tearing down my thing, I'm done, okay? I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I ain't no wooden spoon, I'm through, right? And so, um, and can we get that monitor back on so I can see comments up there? I don't know if that's doable or not. Um, so, so the, what happened was, uh, I got tired of doing multi-level marketing. I said, you know, I don't want to do multi-level marketing anymore, but I discovered something. By the way, I'm going to, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to pull back the curtain for y'all. Here's what I discovered. I discovered if you're good at something, and by the way, I got to the point where I was making like 7,000 a month. That was better than 90% of the people in multi-level marketing. Like, okay, I get it. People who are making 20,000 a month aren't going to want to learn from me. I get it. But people who are, make, who are making $20 a month are going to want to learn from me, right? right? And I found out also that the higher somebody is in network marketing or in anything, and the, people that, the, the bigger the gap there is between the people who are at the top and the people who are at the bottom, there's not just a gap in income, there's a gap in communication. And what happens is people who are up here will say things that makes perfect sense to them and makes no sense to the people down here. I know that because I, used to, I went to all the trainings, and they would say stuff, and I'd go attempt to do it, but clearly they were, we had the same vocabulary, but we had two different dictionaries. And so what I had to do was I had, because it took me a long time to become successful, right? And by successful, I mean, you know, um, by 1987-ish, 1998-ish, I was making five, six, seven, sometimes $7,000 a month, but I still wasn't making six figures a year. Right? I didn't have my first six figure year until 1999. People say, Myron's overnight success. I wasn't overnight success. It was just a 14 year night. <laughs> a very, very, very long night. Right? And I was working on stuff that wasn't working for me, but what I didn't realize then that I realize now, all the stuff that I was working on that wasn't working for me was working on me so that I could become the person for whom it would work. And I submit to you that just like King Solomon said, in all labor there is profit and all work works, right? So 
And because all work works, you have to know, you have to know where your work is working. Is your work working for you? If the answer to that is no, then I promise you it's working on you. The question you've got to answer is, are you willing to let your work work on you until you become the person for whom it can work? And if the answer to that question is yes, then eventually, I've got great news for you. You're on a path that leads to some really cool, fun stuff. So, so, so fast forward, I, I started teaching network marketers how to do network marketing. And I remember my very first product that I created. This, I'm, I'm about to, y'all about to see how old I am now. Right? I created a training program. It was four cassette tapes, right? <laughs> right? It was four cassette tapes called Bigger, Better, Faster Network Marketing. And a company asked me to do some training. I recorded the training that I did, put it on four cassette tapes, and I sold that for $67. That was my very first product. I wasn't selling it online yet. I was just selling it when I'd go speak somewhere. They'd buy my four products. Then I'd record some more other products, add those to it. And I just kept on recording new products and adding new products until I had me a big old whopping $497 product. And in 1999, after shifting my focus, I accidentally made $6,200 in one week. This was before I started my, I didn't start my training company until 2003. I forgot to tell you this part. This is, this is where I discovered this whole concept of stop being a heartaholic. Because in 1998, I'm, in fact, I'm going to write it on the board so y'all can follow. So in 1998, 1998, I know some of y'all weren't here yet, but... For those of you who are, 1998, my income for the year was a big old whopping $48,000 for the whole year. Whole year went by. Okay? Then, April 1999, I made $6,200 in one week. That experience changed my life forever. That experience is why I'm talking to you today. And here's what happened. It changed my life because it was so absolutely easy. It was the easiest money I'd ever made. I'm like, wait a minute, I just made $6,200 this week. And it was so fascinating because what happened and I'll tell you how I made this. I don't usually go into this, but I was in a multi-level marketing company in 1999. My paycheck for that week that I received was $2,100. $2,100. What I did for a living, I was a traveling evangelist, and this big old church somewhere over by Orlando invited me to come speak at their church for a week. So I went and spoke at their church for a week. They gave me a love offering. It was $2,000. And then they allowed me to sell my recordings of my preaching tapes, which I sold for $5 a piece. I sold $2,100 worth of tapes. I made $6,200 in one week. Mariah, can you get me a different marker, marker tip or something? Because this one's doing some funky stuff. It's doing something really wonky. And, um, um, and so I made $6,200 in one week. And then I said, then I said, wow. Thank you. And then I said, I said it upside, I said it backwards, I said, wow. <laughs> and then I said it upside down and backwards, I said, mom, wow. Okay, I made, I made $6,200 in one week. Now, that's not that much money. But to me, if you make $48,000 a year, that's about $4,000 a month. I had just made more in a week than I used to make in a month. And I was blown away. I was like, that was so easy. And then I said, that must mean, I can, I, I, I'm 99% sure I said it out loud. That must mean it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. And if that's true, and I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to own it from now on, that that's true. It's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. If that's true, since that's true, I am no longer for the rest of my life, I'm not going to look at and I'm not going to look for the hard ways to make a little bit of money. I'm only going to look at and I'm only going to look for the easier ways to make a lot. That was my decision the best decision I've ever made. I'm not saying I don't work hard. Anybody that knows me knows I work hard. I literally was, and I don't usually do this, I don't usually like taking it work home, but this, we got this conference coming up next week. 
I literally was working on stuff in my, when I got in bed last night, I'm still working on stuff that needs to get done, right? But, so I'm, I believe in being diligent. I just don't believe in doing stuff the hard way. Doing stuff the hard way does not make you smarter. It makes you more tired. It does not make you more noble. It makes you more tired, right? So, so when I discovered this um, thing and I made this $6,200 in one week, I'm like, okay, I'm going to look, look for the easy ways to make a lot of money. July of the same year, July, 1998, 1990, 1999, July, 1999, 1999, I had, are you ready for this? I had an $8,000 day. I made $8,000 in the stock market in one day. I was like, this is real. This is real. So I'm going to talk to you all about, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you all, I'm going to give you all my grandfatherly chat. Used to be fatherly, and I just kept on living, so now it's grandfatherly. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you all my grandfatherly chat. Here it is. Um, I know for a fact that it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than to make a little money over a long period of time. Our business generates hundreds of thousands of dollars a week. And I know that sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. And I, I don't, I'm not trying to flex. I don't need you to think anything about me. I don't need you to think I'm awesome. I don't need you to think I'm rich. I don't need you to think anything about me at all. I'm just telling you, I'm giving you a paradigm shift. But I wish somebody had given me. I'm telling you something that if somebody would have told me this, if somebody would have sat me down and said, look, now, Myron, young Myron, look, here's the deal. It's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. But if you're going to make a lot of money in a short period of time, you're going to have to work at higher levels of value. Because that's what I discovered was the master key, right? Because you've got four levels of value. The lowest level is implementation. You use your muscles over time to make money. The next level is unification. You use your management skills to make money. You make more money than the people who do the thing when you manage the people who do the thing. But wealth doesn't start to be created until you get above that next line, and that's communication. You use your mouth to make money. You craft messages that move the masses. You have conversations that create cash flow. And whether that means you're an author, whether that means you're in sales, whether that means you're a singer or a songwriter. Like my wife asked me the other day, she said, Meyer, do you know who the richest country singer is? I said, yeah, Dolly Parton. 100%. You know why Dolly Parton's the richest country singer? Because she's written the most songs and she owns the rights to all the songs. She's the one that communicated the message. She don't sing all the songs. She's wrote, she's written more country songs, has more country songs written, copyrighted than anybody, other country songwriter. She's the richest country song. Like you wouldn't, if you did, like I study business, so I know, I want to know the business aspect of people's business, right? Well, use your mouth. You write songs. You write movies. You act in movies. Um, you're in sales. You're an author. You're a speaker. You're a coach. You're a consultant. I'm a consultant. I show people what, which buttons to push on their business. And when I show them which buttons to push on their business, they push those buttons and then they send me money. I helped one of my clients um, last month generate an extra $230,000 last month. And it took me about 45 minutes to do that. Now, I'm, 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 I promise you I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm just, I'm, just I'm, 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 tra I'm, I'm hopefully translating a belief, like transferring a belief to you. My commission on that was $95,000. $95,000 for 45 minutes of work. It was, I didn't get paid the $95,000 for doing the 45 minutes of work. I got paid the $95,000 for knowing which 45 minutes of work to do. And see, most people, they work hard on what's not working so they won't have to spend the mental energy to think about what would work better. People say, Myron, what do you do? I'm a consultant. What's that mean? Well, it, it's kind of like the opposite of an employee. What does that mean? Well, I used to be an employee. I had a job. And so people paid me so they could tell me what to do. Right? So I was an employee. They paid me, so now they can tell me what to do. Now I'm a consultant. People pay me so I can tell them what to do. <laughs> right? And, and that sounds funny, but the reality is, when I tell them what to do and they do it, they make more money. That is the reality of it. And people say, oh, all you care about is money. Well, you clearly don't know me. 
right? And I don't, I mean, I, I care less whether you think that about me or not. I don't, I don't need you to think I care, all I care about is money. I don't, think, I don't need you to think all I care about is people. I don't, it's really none of my business. You can think whatever you want to about me. That shirt's too yellow. Whatever, bro, do you. Okay, so my objective is to help you discover skills. So the third highest level is communication. The highest level is imagination. The people who come up with the best ideas and then communicate them the best, those are the people who make the most money. You're working with your muscles, you're, the amount of money you're going to be able to generate, the amount of wealth you're going to be able to generate with a physical resource that's constrained by a limited resource called time is going to be a limited amount of money. Wealth is a spiritual outcome, which means if you want to produce a lot of wealth, you have to operate on a higher spiritual level. And communication is higher than doing it yourself, and it's even higher than managing the people who do it. All of us have to work in all of those arenas. There's some implementation that I have to do. There's some unification, management that I have to do. There's some communication that I have to do, and there's some imagination I have to do. The big money I make is because of my ideas and my words. That's where the big money comes from. The big money that I make doesn't come from me shoveling dirt or washing, some, cleaning something or painting something or fixing something. And it's okay if that's the business you're in. There's nothing wrong with those businesses. It's just really hard to create wealth because you've put yourself in a business that has built-in limitations that you can't overcome. And, the, and I'm not saying that everybody needs to be in the business I'm in. Some people don't want to be. Some people like doing plumbing. Then do plumbing. Some people like fixing cars. Fix cars. One's not better than the other. They're just different. The only way, to, whether you know it's better, is does it get you closer to your objective? If it gets you closer to your objective, it's better. If it gets you, keeps you further from your objective for a longer period of time, it's not better. That's, that's the measurement. Does it help you fulfill your purpose? If it helps you fulfill your purpose, it's better. If it doesn't help you fulfill your purpose, it's not better. Okay, you are tracking. So here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm, I've been running my mouth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some giveaways. Um, what do I need to do to do these giveaways? We got the randomizer. Oh, okay. So you go, that's what you were doing with the Bible. Okay. Do I, do I need to change to, a, I'll, I'll let you get that set up and I'll talk for a minute. Cause I don't know. I would go over there and start doing stuff, but I have no idea what I would do. So, uh, <laughs> um, say it again. It's ready. Oh, okay. So there. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pick somebody. I'm going to give away the new special edition Boss Moves book. That's the new cover. Brrr, special edition. Uh, you, you, these are not even for sale. Um, I don't even know if they'll be for sale. They're not for sale right now. I don't even know if the only thing that's changed is the cover, though. The book is the same. But that's a really, that's a really cool cover. That cover is fire. I'm like, that dude looks familiar. Okay. So, so we're going to give away a new... This is the first new edition Boss Moves book with a new cover, okay? Um, and we're going to give it away to the person who, do I, do I want to what? Oh, I want to stand there? Okay. Do, do I do something? Oh, pick, do I pick? A... Oh, you're going to click the button. So Mariah's going to cl click the button, and when she clicks the button, two, one, boom. This person, Genesee with a butterfly. I think I said that right. Janice, 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 Janice with the butterflies. Janice, are you there? Con give us in the comments if you're there, because if you're there, we want to send you this book, and we're going to tell you how to get us your information for the Boss Moves book. Is she there? There are 1,300 people in here live? China okay. Janice, are you there? So um, here's what I want to. Um, I, I need, we need to have we need to have a better way to let people contact us. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to give you a phone number. That's a, no. I'm I'm going to give you. A, okay. So we can do that. So here's what we'll do. Um, for people who win, other than the ticket, the ticket is going to have to be live. The ticket has to be live because I have to know if you're coming or not, right? So, and you're going to need to respond within 30 seconds. So, Janice, you just won. 
we're, um, she's going to mess, um, our team's going to message you. She's, we know who you are. Um, when you see this, send an email with your address, your name and address, um, email address, in, information to connect at myrongolden.com. C-O-N-N-E-C-T, connect at myrongolden.com. Larry's going to put it in the chat. That's perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to give away, I'm going to give away some money. So how much money am I going to give away? You, you have to be, you have to be subscribed, by the way. You have to be subscribed publicly and um, you have to be live, um, you, you don't have to be live, but you have to be subscribed publicly and I'm going to give away $100. And I'm, I'm going to send it through Cash App, so you're going to need Cash App. I'm not going to send it through PayPal because PayPal is the devil. Um, and they probably aren't going to like it I said that, but I don't like how they treat business owners, so it is what it is. Okay, so um, so I'm going to give away $100 in cash, and I'm going to pick the next person. This is so cool. I get to push a button. So Larry, go into whiteboard mode so they can watch and see who this is going to be. Okay, here we go. I'm going to push the button. Screen, picture, picture. Ready? Okay, or Marima's going to pick it, I guess, because I can't pick it. Marima? Click. Boom. Jarrett Lopez. You just won $100. Jarrett, Jarrett Lopez. And you're going to you screenshot that, right, Marima? Okay. Jarrett Lopez. Okay, $100. You know what? I'm, I'm just really, I'm really feeling generous. And I just think there's some people in here who really deserve to win some money. Let's do another $100. Let's do another $100. Give away $100. Another $100. Somebody's going to win $100. You ready? Push the button again, and it's going to be Luke Carrero. Luke just won $100. He said, I would appreciate a ticket, Myron. God bless you. <laughs> I love that, bro. I love that, bro. Okay. Um, tell you what I'm going to do. All of the winners today, all of the, I don't know, do, are we full on volunteers, or we still need a couple of volunteers? You don't, you don't know? I think we may need. So, so we may, here's what I'm going to say, if we still need volunteers for our event, we may send out um, a volunteer application to people who win today as well. So uh, I, I need to just find out from our event planner whether or not we still need volunteers. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Laura. I mean, I'm sorry, Marima. I know you're not Laura. You said Laura, and it made me think of Laura. So, so what, am, am I, what did I just say? Am I giving away another $100? I gave away $200 already? Sheesh. We set this money on fire today, y'all. We set this money on fire. Okay. Um, um, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, somebody, one of our Bible study attendants gave us a YouTube formula book. So I started selling, I started do, doing YouTube intentionally um, April of last year. My YouTube, I hired this guy, Daryl Eaves, um, to this guy who wrote this book. It's called The YouTube Formula. It's a really thick book. It's got... It's got 300 and something pages. Yeah, 300 and something pages. And it's a really thick book. It was written by Daryl Eves. Daryl Eves has a coaching program that he sells for $15,000. I bought that program for $15,000. I also bought the book for however much it is, um, $27.50. I bought the book, but I also bought the coaching program. Oh, um, yes, no. I don't know who that is in New York. No. Um, so, um, so, bought the book, The YouTube Formula. Everything he teaches in his coaching program is in this book. So, we got a video coming out um, in a couple of weeks. Next Friday, next Friday, a video is coming out on how I made six figures my first year as a YouTuber. In fact, we made over 200 and something thousand dollars, over $250,000 my first year as a YouTuber because of the principles that are in this book. I'm giving this book away. Thank you for the book. So I'm giving the book away. So that book, giving that book away. So we're going to do pick a winner for the book, YouTube formula, and it's going to be momentum growth. Uh, the three-step value order earned wealth. Okay. So, so momentum growth, um, we got your information. Now I'm going to give away a ticket, a $497 ticket to Offer Mastery Live. It's a sold out event. I can't give away 10 tickets. I can't give away three tickets. I'm giving away one ticket, one ticket. But you have to be live and you'll have to respond in a timely fashion. Um, what's that? You did what? Oh, there's a delay, that's right. 
That's true. There is a delay. Hmm. Okay. You, you, so I'm going to, I'll give y'all three or four minutes to respond. That way we can find you. Okay. Okay. So it may, I don't know if there's a way to look for him in the comments or not. YouTube, YouTube is kind of challenging with that. Okay. But we're going to do the giveaway. This is for the ticket. This is for the ticket to Offer Mastery Live in Tampa, Florida. Next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's going to be an off-the-charts event. I'm going to be speaking. Russell Brunson's going to be speaking. Nehemiah Davis is going to be speaking. Eileen Wilder, uh, Dan Henry, uh, Tasha McRae, um, Marvin Mitchell, Carter Cofield, Carwana Irving, just all these different speakers are going to be speaking, and it's going to be an off-the-charts event. So congratulations in advance for the winner. We're going to pick a winner right now. Winner, winner, not chicken dinner. What's that? On three. Winner, winner, not chicken dinner. dinner. One, two, three. No. Okay. No, no. Uh, they messing with me. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Light power. I received this good word. Good stuff. Light power one. Okay. So... Um, with that being said, we just gave that away. Should we give away, what else should we give away? Let's give away a Trash Man to Cash Man book. While this person is, while Light Power is figuring out how to contact us for the ticket they just won. No, they don't, you, what do you mean? Yeah, for the ticket you have to be live, because if you're not. So Light Power, can y'all stop, can everybody stop leaving comments so Light Power can let me know whether they're here or not? Please, pretty please, with sugar on top. You can't stop commenting. I can't stop. I'm commenting and I can't stop. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, wow. Pretty please. Okay, they're not going to stop commenting. So YouTube's, YouTube's, YouTube people are funny. Y'all, y'all are funny. Um, so. Light power, light power, are you there? Is it light power? L-I-G-H-T-P-O-W-R. Um. I know y'all I know y'all are keeping the comments coming because you're hoping they're not here and you want a chance to win, but I'm really like, <laughs> let's be kind. And, and, and here's the problem though, here's the problem with them making sure they're alive. Um, I, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of making sure they're alive, I'm just going to give away. Don't, don't tell KB I did this. I, I, uh, I'm just going to. Uh, 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 I can't do that though, can I? But they, but but they might. But I don't know that the person is not here. No, I get that. But, right, and they might not be here. But if I wait for everybody, if I wait for somebody that's here. We've got 200, we got 200 and 300 and something thousand subscribers. So we may be picking a name. It's more likely that somebody's not here than is here. I don't know. Or, or, yeah, it's from the comments. Oh, it's from the comments. Okay, that makes it easy. Okay. Um, before we do that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do trash man to cash man. I need, Larry, you, do you have my son's phone number? Okay, can, can one of y'all come get my phone? Because I think that might be my son trying to log into my account. Here, just ask him if that's, if that's him in New York trying to log into my Google account. Alrighty, Dobby. So, <laughs> so I'm going to give away a Trash Man to Cash Man book. So, the, so, the, so it's only coming from the comments. Oh, from, oh, oh, from the comments on last. So if you didn't comment on last week's video, then you can't win. Oh, I, did, I didn't realize that. I didn't. Okay, now I get it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Cause, because, because there was no way to make it on these comments. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to give away a Trash Man to Cash Man book, again, while I think about, while I think about um, what I need to do to fix this problem that I've created. Because otherwise, the only other alternative is to open up the event to the entire world and let everybody come. 
Um, and that ain't happening, right? Because the venue won't hold them, right? So, so, um, so we. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. So, but here's 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 what we need to do. Is there a way? Was it him, Larry? Okay. All right. So cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna say no again then. Okay, so, so light power is not responding, so here, how many, I need you to go look at the last video and see how many comments it has, because that, that, right. Yeah, so we got 630 comments, we got 1,300 people in there, it's, it's not, it's not, there's no universe in which that's going to, all those 630 people are on here right now. So I, I need to figure out a different way to do it. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give away three, I'm going to give away two more tickets. Uh, so we're going to give one to Light Power. Hopefully the people are on, because there's no way to just make sure it's just the people who are, can, is there a way to draw the people who are on comments now? There's no way, right? That's not possible. So, so hopefully, here's, here's, here's the lesson. Watch all my videos and comment on all of them. No, I'm not, I'm not, that's the only solution there is for this particular software that picks these people, right? So I'm going to give Trash Man to Cash Man book, Trash Man to Cash Man book, how I went from the Trash Man to being a Cash Man, or how you can, um, how you, anyone can get rich starting from anywhere. So let's pick a winner for that, and that is going to be C. Ray. There are so, there are so you are such an inspiration, brother. Thank you for being a mentor. I needed much more season in my life. Well, I am glad. That is a blessing. Hopefully C. Ray is on. I'm going to give away three more did I say two more tickets? Two more tickets or three more tickets? What did I say? Well, if I said three, a good man swears to his own hurt and changes not. So I'm going to give away three more tickets, and then we're going to wind down the YouTube. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Um, pick a winner for a ticket right now, and that is going to be Fashion Sense. Old subscriber, love your content, want one of your books. <laughs> In Ghana, so she's probably not coming. Well, if she is coming to the event, we'll give her a ticket. If she's not coming, we'll give her a book. Okay, so that'll make it easy. So if, somebody, if we reach out to somebody they can't come to the event, we'll send them a book. Okay, so let's go to the next one. We're going to do two more. Two. Uh, seriously, though, guys, I, I don't know how all the YouTube stuff works, so ready for the next one. Let's go. Cortez Conquistador. <laughs> I like that. I like that comment. Cortez said, "Money is not wealth, but it sure is nice to have a home to come back to because you paid your rent." <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You should try your hand at comedy, there, Cortez. That's pretty funny. Okay, and now we're gonna do one. One more. One more, one more ticket. If you can't come, we'll give you a book. Okay, here it is. Jamal Empowers. Is that Jamal Mumford? I wonder if that's Jamal Mumford. Jamal Mumford. Um, Jamal Empowers, you just won yourself a ticket or a book. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to end the YouTube because we have a whole bunch of other stuff we got to do to get ready for our upcoming event, including but not limited to uh, me and my social media team. We have to take a trip downtown to go look at some, uh, get some video and some footage and some pictures of some boats and stuff. So in the meantime, in between time, peace out, stay blessed by the best, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye for now.